stuff that's new skin that's starting to grow. They need to understand that I'm a part of their environment. If I start to make shelving, I can get more square footage for them to move around on, but no nose rub. They're having some squabbles. It is the breeding season. We got a Chinese box turtle. Now, what are you doing to her, buddy? Hey, what's going on everyone? Kenan here and it is Saturday, so that means it's time for another Ask Camp Kenan question. And these questions come from my Patreon supporters. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, we love when you guys get on over there on Patreon. You can see all kinds of videos and interact with me in different ways that you can't anywhere else. So if you guys would like to become a part of the team helping us create these videos, head on over to patreon.com slash campkenan. And if you have a question, ask it and we will answer it in one of the videos on Saturday. So today's question comes from Daniel Mercado. Let me read it to you right here. He says, love you show. I have a rhino iguana that has just started to eat from my hand. He's approximately seven to eight months old. He still won't let me touch him or pick him up. How can I further trust him or how can I further his trust in me rather and also helping tame him down? Thank you. All right, well, Daniel, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, it's a question that I've had to deal with here uh, multiple times and it's one that I am constantly trying to figure out myself. Uh, there's no one way to do it. Um, I'm actually coming to you from inside the enclosure that I moved over from the tortoise area to over by the pond. Uh, which is probably why you hear some water running. We're over here by the uh, bog filter here at the uh, rec pond. Now, um, I'm in a rhino iguana enclosure and uh, we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna answer your question. I'm gonna update you on the injured uh, iguana that was uh, rubbing his face. I wanna show you guys how he's doing. Uh, and I'll also show you the female and uh, let's get right to it. So I have in my hand the injured iguana. But if you look, his face is starting to heal up. Uh, which I'm happy about. So let's see. I, I'm very gentle with him. I'm holding him. I'm interacting with him. I'm letting him know that it's not a bad experience. Now, when I move my hand to the camera to try and focus, he may actually start to squirm, but I'm going to just try and move slowly and pass by him. I'm going to touch the screen to see if we can focus in on him. All right, there we go. I think the camera's trying to do its thing. And you can kind of see his face is starting to heal. That's new material. All right, that's new skin that's starting to grow. Now, it still looks raw and angry, so we are going to continue to put some Neosporin and some Silvadine cream on that. Uh, but that Silvadine cream is just incredible. Uh, and as you can see, I'm holding him. He's not squirming. Uh, he's actually doing a good job just hanging out. So you want to be calm with your animal. I like to come in this enclosure. I like to sit in it with the animals and just let them get used to my, uh, well, my presence to be perfectly. Oh, you see that? You see that, guys? I felt him build up. I got a little too close and he went for me. So you always have to keep that in mind. Remember, this animal's scared, okay? And the only thing that's gonna kinda allay his fears is to have positive interactions with me, all right? And animals' personalities are different between animal to animal, okay? So you may have an iguana that right off the bat is just more quote unquote tame or more tolerant, I would say. I think the animals tolerate us. And there are ways to kind of make them more comfortable or to make them tolerate us more. I never like to fully say that these are domesticated animals. I don't believe that, but they can tame up. But uh, had I been a little closer and not ready for that, I could have gotten a good bite on the face or a whip on the face like that. <laughs> These animals have a mind of their own uh, and you just have to be prepared for that. If you guys are looking for a dog or a cat, you probably should get a dog or a cat. And so obviously he's not comfortable with me being right here. So let's move him a little bit further and just get him used to me. I'll stroke him, just try and pet him, give him positive reinforcement. Uh, if you have food, food is one of the best ways to actually tame him down. Now, when I let this guy go, I'm gonna put him into the box because I don't want him to start freaking out, running all over and doing more damage to his face since it's healing nicely. So I wanna do that. But you know, so it's a case of getting the animal used to you. I think what you're doing, Daniel, where you're actually feeding the animal, once he's taking food out of your hands, that's huge. That's a major, major milestone, okay? You gotta also remember this guy's probably still feeling a little uncomfortable and they have memories and they remember that I, you know, cleaned up that face, uh, you know, which was kind of painful, but it was a necessary thing to do. 
So he's probably not happy with me. Um, so I have to learn to, or I have to earn this animal's trust. Uh, it is what it is, and it's patience and time. Um, I don't need these animals to fully become tame. That just happens on its own. It's happened with my other pair of rhino iguanas. It's happened with um, Slinky. It's happened with Pinky. It's also happened with Guapo and Lola. And I think it's just interaction. Being in the enclosure, feeding them, them understanding that you're not here to hurt them. This guy just keeps whipping me. And even those little whips on my leg, they actually sting a little bit. So it's something like that. The animals kind of tame themselves, if that makes any sense. They tolerate you. So keep on doing what you're doing. Give them some food. Uh, make sure that their needs are met. What I am going to do is also, I'm going to leave this enclosure here in a moment. And I'm going to show you, I may actually move them to a different type enclosure. Um, and I'll show you that enclosure. Uh, it'll be kind of cool because uh, not only will we be answering questions, we're also going to show you, hold on one second. Sorry about that, everybody. Good grief. I should know better, right, when filming? Okay, anyway, now that we got that silenced, we got this animal back. Uh, I was explaining to you that I am going to be um, working on some new enclosures. I want to show you them. Uh, that would be just perfect for a pair of lizards uh, this size. So um, it'll be a good intermediary, uh, and I think would cut down on some of this nose rub. Uh, because this particular animal is so very... Um, I would say anxious, okay? This animal has a lot of anxiety. Um, I don't know what happened to him early on in his life because uh, I did get these animals just uh, about six months ago uh, from someone who just, to be perfectly honest, he was having a hard time with them because they were bitey and uh, he didn't have the experience with larger lizards. And so basically uh, I took them. So uh, here they are. But anyway, his face is doing much better. Very happy with that. I'm gonna take him and I'm gonna put him in I'm gonna go ahead and put him in the box. Now you are gonna hear some running around and stuff, but I wanna put him in there and then let him come out on his own. Oh, and there you go. He's decided to come out and I really don't like this because I don't want him to bash that little face. There's the female up right on my foot. Just relax. Let's see if he'll calm down a little bit. I'm not gonna try and grab him. Just let him do his thing. Even though, you know, this guy has that face, what I'm gonna do is just kind of back out of the enclosure and let them do their thing. I don't want them to fall. I'll risk a bite, but I definitely don't want them to fall. But you can kind of see, I would actually just sit in here, guys. You may think this is mean, but it's not. It's necessary. They need to understand that I'm a part of their environment, that I'm, uh, I'm definitely something they're gonna be seeing from day to day. Here he is. And to be honest, guys, this is not as spastic as I've seen them in the past. So I wanna continually do this. Spend time in here with these animals. I will bring food in with, for these animals. And what I'm gonna do now is back away because I like how his face was healing and I just don't want him to freak out. It's so frustrating. But let me show you what I'm gonna do next. Let's get on out of here. And as soon as I move, guys, these guys are gonna freak a little bit. But I'm gonna move slow and steady, just like this. We also don't want them to jump out, which would be a pain in the neck trying to catch these little maniacs. Okay, so we got that going. But let me finish this video by showing you, uh, show you, I don't think that's a word, by showing you what I'm gonna be up to, okay, with these new enclosures. Uh, here's the pond, beautiful morning, really nice early morning. And uh, I love coming out and doing things early because I got the whole rest of the day to play with the animals. But here's a quick update. Look at all the cichlids are doing great. Uh -huh. And that pond is uh, definitely clear. So what I like to do is I wake up super early. I get out in the pond. I uh, just enjoy seeing the lilies growing. We got all sorts of interesting things happening with the lilies, uh, which is exciting. I was never much of a plant guy until I got into animals, you know, until I really started to understand how important plants are in the ecosystems. So, okay, so we, we did have some big machines and they came on in uh, and my gosh, just a really nutty thing to do here. Uh, but let me show you, these are the new enclosures, okay? And these enclosures came to me from my friend Emily Maple who works as a keeper at the Palm Beach Zoo. So these were exhibits 
okay? And uh, they were set into a wall. They had a facade around them. But uh, these exhibits here have doors in the back, as you can see. So these are going to be some new, really cool snake enclosures. Um, I'll definitely have some lizards in there. Some of these actually hold water. So I'll be able to have, like this is a mangrove type enclosure, so I could have some turtles in there, maybe caiman lizards would be pretty amazing in there. But I'm thinking this larger enclosure here, this is a big enclosure, if I can put some shelves up in this enclosure, let's go inside the enclosure and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. Um, they're heavy too, you need a forklift in order to move these suckers. But look at this, these doors, I got a little viewing window, I can look in at them, but here they are on the inside. Um, I think these are really cool and they've got a screen top okay so heat can escape um, and I think the rhinos it's a it's roughly the same size if I start to make shelving on this I can get more square footage for them to move around on but no nose rub they're not gonna rub their nose because three sides of this is actually enclosed and then you just have the glass viewing window so uh if i provide them a nice hiding area the whole nine yards i think this will be a pretty cool grow up enclosure for these rhino iguanas a little bit smaller but again i'm going to utilize different levels and that will aid in the floor space and help these guys out so it's pretty cool man that i got these these are beautifully made they're waterproof um just a really made out of a uh, non, uh, this is, I forget the type of plastic they use, but it's, does not rot, it does not eat away. Here's another one, you can kind of see. Just open them up. They're dirty, I'm gonna of course clean them. We have a, a brown animal in there. Uh, but I'm gonna clean them up. They got little planting pockets where you can plant the plants and maybe some philodendron or pothos or bromeliads and can really spruce these enclosures up. So there'll be a bunch of videos as I start to work on these, uh, you guys will see these videos. I think you'll enjoy it because we love to create things here. Here's the last one. Again, this one had water in it. So just I've got to go back and I've got to seal them again because they've been sitting outside for a while. But I think these are really cool enclosures. This one had a misting system on it. Uh, I can fix that up, but not a bad gift, huh? So shout out to my friends at the Palm Beach Zoo this was stuff they no longer needed. They contacted me and their generosity has meant the world. So that's really, really cool, huh? So what I'm thinking of doing, everybody, is I'm going to build a platform um, and then build a facade in front of them. So all you see is the glass. This will be hidden. Okay, I'll hide this all up. Um, and then basically, uh, yeah, there'll be a backstage where I'm able to get behind and open the doors and stuff. So I'm really, really excited. So, okay, Daniel. I hope I answered your question, man. It has a lot to do with the enclosure. It has a lot to do with you being in the enclosure, interacting with the animal uh, that you're trying to make tame. Um, it's a super important thing to do. Get in there, be involved in the animals. One of the other things that I have, Daniel, as you know, and folks out there watching, if you really want to tame a lizard up, um, I have animals outside. That's how I do it. Some of you live uh, in colder climates and your animals stay in smaller enclosures. Uh, but let them out, interact with them, be in the room with them, open their cage, let them come out and explore on their own if they're the type of lizard that does that, like a monitor or, or a larger iguana. Um, here's Slinky, there he is. Right now we're gonna be cleaning out his water so it's a little bit low, but there's Slinky. And again, uh, Slinky and I became friends. I just come in as a closure. As he got larger, he got more and more secure. See, he still jumps back a little bit. You still have to be gentle. And I am always conscious that this is not, hey buddy, that this is not a domesticated animal. This is an animal that tolerates me, okay? So Slinky and I have a trust and you don't want to break that trust. You want to build trust with the animals. As you can see, I come in, he puts, him, puts his scent on me. He likes to investigate me, see if I've brought him any food. He's a real lover, this guy. And I say that meaning he's not really a lover. He's just very, very tolerant of me, and he's an intelligent lizard, and he knows that I bring him the food. So there's Slinks. You guys, you know him, you love him, you've seen him. Now let's go look at Lola and Guapo. They're out and about. These two get very excited. You know, earlier I said, if you want a dog, get a dog. I have to be honest with you, these two lizards are probably my crowning achievement as far as taming an animal. 
and they've lived inside this enclosure their entire lives. Uh, this is about 12 foot by 20 foot, this one section of the enclosure. Oh, it's these two. Oh, I want to get my feet away from there. They're having some squabbles. It is the breeding season. I don't know if she's gravid yet or not, um, but usually during the breeding season after they've bred, they get, she gets a little bit uh, less tolerant of him. So even if you're a lizard and you have another one of your own kind, uh, they have to tolerate each other. So see, I have to be careful. I'm in open toes here. But anyway, this is the normal iguana face-off. But as far as I'm concerned, they love me. See this? Oh, oh, little scratches. And then even though she's a little stressed out, now this is a little dangerous. I just dent gently touch her, let her know it's me. But because they're fighting, I want to move them. There you go. Oh, look at this. We got a Chinese box turtle climbing up on her. Now, what are you doing to her, buddy? She's not a log you can climb over. But anyhow, these are my crowning achievement as far as being tamed towards humans. I've never had a bite, a nip, or anything uh, from these guys. So I'm very, very lucky, very fortunate. And I uh, just wanted to show you, I mean, I basically did it by the size of the enclosures and then just being in here with them, feeding them and letting them know I'm part of their environment. And patience, everybody, have patience, okay? So there you go, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? You're gonna bite my toes, aren't you? Yeah, they're murderous, the Chinese box turtles. I even have a little rhino poop on my... Are you going to eat the rhino poop? Please. That's disgusting. You're going to sniff it? You're going to eat it? What's going on here? That's poop, dude. Sometimes turtles will eat poop. <laughs> We've learned a lot in today's ass camp, Kenan. I am now going to sign off. Just got the poop off my leg, my foot. I'm going to sign off now, everybody. Thank you so much, Daniel, for your uh, patronage and for your support on Patreon. If you guys want to also help out, once again, go to patreon.com slash Camp Cannon. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe these videos. Share them along to your friends if they have reptiles and they're looking for a little info. Hopefully you can get something useful out of them. And uh, go on over to the Camp Cannon Army channel where you can find even more videos that you won't find anywhere else. All right, everyone, I'm Ken, and I'm saying goodbye. Lola's saying goodbye, giving you a head bob, and uh, goodbye from Guapo. Guapo, say goodbye. Guapo, say goodbye. Yeah, well, all right, yeah, thanks. Thanks for doing that. All right, everyone, we'll see you soon.